So I want to talk about uh, traversals, okay? And a traversal is just a way to visit each of the elements in a tree. So for example, I might have this tree right here. I have some nodes and some uh, leaves and so on, okay? And uh, what I want to do is actually uh, go to each one of them. So I might, for example, visit this guy here and then visit that one and this one and this one and then visit that and this and this and this and that, okay? So traversal just a way of visiting each node. Now, what does visit mean? Whatever we want it to mean, okay? Maybe it just means that I print the value of the node. Maybe it means that I add one to the value of the node, whatever we want, okay? So we're not gonna, we're not gonna really focus on that. What we're gonna focus on is the actual traversal process. And uh, there's kind of three types of traversals that, uh, that make sense, okay? So um, what we'll do is we'll, we'll talk about this. And, and what I want you to focus on is the order in which we visit the uh, the notes okay so here is uh, the first obvious way of doing it and it's called post order traversal okay and in a post order traversal we'll visit the children okay and then we'll visit the note okay so uh, for example if I have something like this then I'm gonna visit in this order I'm gonna visit the children of the root first so I'll have to visit this one now I'm going to visit the children of this other node first because I can't visit it until I visit its children, okay? So this is the order that I would visit them in, okay? That is a post-order traversal. First visit the children, then visit the actual node, okay? Now why would you ever want that? And, and actually, um, a really good example is expression trees, okay? So let's look at an expression tree, like for example, um, I might have... Uh, a plus, okay, and a two, and a times, and a three, and a five, okay. So by visiting them in the order that uh, that's a post-order traversal, we'll do this. Okay, first we'll visit this node, okay, and so we know that that value is a two. Then we'll visit this node, that's a three. Then we'll visit this one, uh, that's going to be a five, right? And so now when we come here and visit this node, we've already visited his children. So now we can say, oh, this is a times node. So what I need to do is do three times five. The value is 15, okay? And then I can now do the add because I have the value of the two, which is my left child, and I have the value of 15 for my right child. So I add those and I get 17, okay? So it's actually important to visit my children first because that's how I get their value, right? So, um, so this is a very common uh, pattern, this uh, post-order traversal when we're dealing with um, with expression trees, right? Uh, so let's look at this code right here. Um, this is uh, in Python, right? And it's just the val expression. You're, I'm actually asking you to write the same code uh, in ACL2 in one of the projects, right? So the first thing that we check is, is it empty? Okay, or, um, actually, I guess a better way of asking, is it a leaf? Okay, and uh, in this particular case, it's a leaf if it's just a number, right? So if it's a leaf, then we just return its value. That's the case here and here and here, that we just return two, three, or five, okay? Now, otherwise, here we split the tree, okay? And what do I mean by splitting the tree? I need to know what the operator is, the left uh, subtree and the right subtree. And then look at these two here. That is the visit children, okay? Okay. And of course, visit is recursive, right? So we're going to find out what the values are of the left subtree and the right subtree. And then this part here, this is actually visiting the parent. Okay. So and by visiting the parents is I'm actually visiting a an internal node, which means that it's an operator. Then what I mean is to figure out its value, right? And that means getting the left value, the right value, and adding them or subtracting them or whatever. Okay, and and we can now execute uh, some code with that. Okay, and we'd get uh, uh we'd get correct answers. Okay, so so that's a post order traversal. Okay. Now, uh, what other things can we do? Well, we can do pre-order traversals. In a pre-order, we visit the node first, and then uh, we visit the children, okay? So this also has quite a few uses. So for example, let's say that I have an expression tree, and uh, we'll go ahead and um, put a times two plus three, five, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert this to an ACL2 expression. We're gonna skip the parentheses, okay? So uh, let's see. The first thing we do is we visit the node, okay? By visiting, in this case, I mean print, okay? So what are we gonna do? We're gonna visit this guy first, and so we'll print 
times, okay? And then we'll go to the left node and we'll visit it. What does visiting it mean? It simply means printing it, right? So it's a two. And then we'll visit uh, the right tree, okay? And so we'll, we'll print the plus, and then we'll visit his left child. So we'll print a three, and then we'll print a five. Uh, actually, that is the, uh, well, it has several different names, but uh, is known as the uh, um, a Polish notation for um, for expressions. And what that means is that we put the operator first. So times two and then plus three, five. Uh, as long as we know that we're dealing with binary operators, okay, then you actually don't need parentheses, right? This, the, this, uh, this notation is, uh, um, you can always evaluate what it is. Uh, it's from, it might be familiar to some of you because of uh, some famous uh, HP calculators that use reverse Polish notation. They would actually write this backwards, you know, uh, two, three, five plus times, right? Okay. All right. So, so that's, uh, that's what we're trying to do. Now let's look at the code that accomplishes that. And uh, we have ACL2 if I, okay? So, uh, so let's look at this. It's uh, very similar to what we had before. This uh, simply takes care of the um, uh, leaf, okay? So if it's a leaf, we just print the number that it corresponds to, right? Otherwise, we split it up uh, into the operator left and right uh, subchild. And look at this. That visits the node. And then we visit the left, and then we'll visit the right. All right. So it's the same uh, same principle. And uh, and again, like I said, you know, notice the strategy. It's pretty cool. Uh, we visit a node, and then we visit each of the childrens. Visit the node first. This is a pre-order traversal. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's try uh, some other examples of pre-order traversals. Um, and uh, here, what we're gonna do is um, we're actually going to um, uh, put in, uh, well, actually, this is a post-order traversal, I'm sorry. And, and what we're doing is instead of printing it in Polish notation, we're going to use reverse Polish notation. And, and there's not uh, much different. In fact, the only difference is this. This is the part that visits the node, right? And we moved it. It used to be up here, and now it's moved down there. That's it, right? And so that means that first we visit the children, then we visit the node. So instead of pl printing, you know, plus two, three, we'll print two, three, plus. That's reverse Polish, okay? And that's what uh, some HP calculators use, okay? Okay, we've done pre-order, we've done post-order. Those are the two main ones, okay? Uh, the only thing left is something called in-order. It could have been called middle-order. Uh, the whole idea of in order, and this only makes sense for binary trees, okay, is that we're going to visit the node in between visiting the children. So what we'll do is we'll uh, visit the left subtree, then we'll visit the node, and then we'll visit the right subtree, okay? That's middle order, or really called in order, okay? So, uh, so where this really works well is with a binary search tree, because this is the way a binary search tree looks, okay? We have a node, and then we have the left tree, and these are all smaller than n, okay? And then we'll have the right tree, and these are all bigger than n, all right? So what we'll do is we'll write this, okay? So those are all the ones that are smaller than n, okay? So two, 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 and these are all smaller than n. And then we'll put n, and then we'll put all the ones that are bigger than n, okay? Now, the um, left tree actually looks exactly like that. It's going to have some root here. Let's say it's got M, okay? And then it will have children, the left children and everything that's smaller than M, the right children and everything that's bigger than M, okay? So because of the way that we're printing it, we print everything that's small and then N and then everything that's bigger, it's actually prints it out in sorted order, okay? Uh, so if we simply make the statement, oh, the in-order traversal does things in sorted order, then you see that it holds true by induction, right? So if I'm printing a, a, a tree that has just one thing, right? You know, it's just a root, then of course it's in sorted order because, well, there's only the one thing. Uh, otherwise, I print the left children, which are everything smaller than the root and in order, right? And then I'll print the root and then I'll print the right children, which is everything that's bigger than the root and in order. So when I combine those, it's in order, the small ones, n and the big ones, right? So, uh, so that's, uh, that's one of the ways that we can process uh, 
uh, search trees, we can actually use them to, to sort, okay? So here's, uh, here's the code that does that, okay? So uh, here we're processing this tree. If, uh, if the tree is empty, then we just don't do anything, right? Uh, otherwise, if it happens to be a number, meaning is a leaf, right? Then we just print that, okay? Just this value and that's it, right? Uh, otherwise, we will uh, get the tree, okay? And uh, print the um, the um, uh, left, okay? And then we print the root or the node, and then we print the right, okay? So what's important to notice here is the order in which that's done. First the left, then the node, then the right. That is an in-order traversal, okay? So if I were to actually print this, you notice that uh, th this tree, by the way, right, is equal to 11, and then we have 6, and then we have f uh, 4, and then we have 5, like that, okay? And uh, we have an 8, nothing here, sorry, and a 10. And then up here we have 19, 17, 43, 31, and then a mystery number, okay? So if we do an in-order traversal, we're going to do this tree first, okay? So we'll do the 6, not yet. We're going to do this tree first, right? And to do that tree first, we get to the 4. We do the left tree. It's empty, so nothing comes out. We do the middle, so we get a 4, and then we get a 5, okay? And then we'll do the 6, and then we'll come here, and we'll do the right subtree, which means... The left branch, there's nothing there, right? And then we'll do the 8, and then we'll do the 10, and then we do the root, right? Because we've done the left tree, and so on. And you see that those numbers are coming out in order, and it will continue to do that, okay? So in-order traversals are actually pretty cool. They're, as far as I know, really used mostly with search trees. Okay. Uh, this is another kind of um, uh, application of an in-order traversal. And what we're doing is we're taking an expression tree, uh, like two, uh, I'm sorry, times two uh, plus three, five, okay? And uh, what we'll do is we'll turn this into, using an in-order traversal, into standard arithmetical notation. So what we do is we print the left uh, subtree, right? That gives me a two, okay? Uh, and then we're gonna print the root, okay? And then we'll print the right subtree, which means first we print the three, and then plus, and then five, okay? Yay, we did it. Uh, actually, no. Uh, the only small problem with that, okay? The only small problem with that is that um, it's not the same tree, right? Because if I were to execute the tree that I gave you is two times, and then three plus five, which is, you know, so eight times two, or uh, 16. But this expression will be two times three, which is six plus five, 11, right? So when we're doing the Polish notation or the reverse Polish notation, uh, like the ACL2 notation, um, you actually don't need to have parentheses, okay? As long as all of the operators are binary, then you can always unfold it, okay? And, and by the way, it's not really binary that matters, is that you know how many arguments each operator needs, okay? Um, when you're doing the... Uh, infix notation, which is the standard mathematical notation, that is no longer true, okay? So we're actually going to need parentheses. And that's why we have this line here, okay, and this line there, okay? So what we're doing here is we're printing the left, we're printing the node, and then we're doing the right. There's our very nice in-order traversal, okay? Left, node, right, okay? But we're going to put parentheses around the whole thing. So when we're doing the two, right, we actually don't put parentheses because that goes through here, right? No. Okay. But then we're going to do times three, five, right? And when we do the three, five, we're going to put a parentheses there. And actually, we're going to have one around the whole expression like that. Okay. So, uh, so that's actually the way that that would print. It's a... Uh, I guess you could call it a modified in order traversal because I have to do the uh, beginning and the end, but it's uh, it's really just an in order traversal.